Hey guys, this is DJ Slope from Slope's Game Room. It's just a little quick video here. Uh, my thank you 2500 subscriber video. Um, pretty damn awesome. I've actually only recently just done an update video actually for uh, what was it, New Year's Eve. So I'm not really going to do this much of an update. All I will say is I've just won YouTuber of the year. So quiz in there. Check out the video right here and uh, keep an eye on my channel to see uh, my hosting abilities for YouTuber of the month. Um, so yeah, you got that going. I did mention a while ago about how I'd be having my own TV show, uh, but obviously that's still a little bit up in the air at the moment. It's sort of grinded to a halt a little bit. Any more information I get on that, I'll obviously let you guys know. Now, uh, to do something a little bit different for this video, what I'm going to be doing is a live, well, not so live actually, but I did it today. Q&A video to celebrate my 2,500 subscribers. Now I did just look, <laughs> I actually hit 2,500 on the 3rd of this month, but that was right in the middle of my two part McDonald's videos that I did here and here. Uh, so I did want to break them up by doing this sort of video, so I'm actually now at 2,722. So this is my thank you for subscribing to me, uh, 2,722 subscriber video. Yes. Okay, so what I did is uh, I put a few posts out there on Twitter. I'm very active on Twitter. If you don't follow me, you should. Uh, on Facebook, uh, onto my Patreons as well. And uh, yeah, I asked them to, you know, basically ask me questions that they want me to answer. It's a Q&A. You know how these things work. So to start off with, we have Trippy the YouTuber. He asks, your favorite game till now? Just name one. Don't cheat saying there are two or three. Congrats on 2,000 subscribers. Cheers. Okay, my favourite game of all time, I don't know if this does go straight against what he asked, but what he said there, uh, is Sonic 3 and Knuckles. It's my all-time favourite game. Technically it's two games, but it was developed as one game. I don't care. It is one game. I'm keeping it as one game. I'm really sorry if that's not what you was after. Chris Ashanked on Twitter asks... Uh, your love for Disney games is obvious, but what other game series do you enjoy? Wow, uh, a hell of a lot. Um, one that I really, really keep an eye on is Pikmin. They're one of my favourite game series. I always, like I say, always look out for new Sonic games, but I really haven't had a fantastic Sonic game since Sonic Adventure, and even looking back at that now is a bit... Uh, uh, I heard there's making a new Burnout, so I'm very much keeping close eye on that one. I love the Uncharted series. I, I, oh, I love those. Uh, I've just finished the new Tomb Raider, that was really good. But um, I, I, I really just keep a very, very heavy eye on the indie scene. Um, so it's not really a series per se. What other series am I into? Um, I, I, I look, I keep an eye on all of the 3D Mario games. I absolutely adore those games. Oh, and Batman. The Batman Arkham Knight games, they are fantastic. Absolutely adore those games. So yeah, I keep an eye on those too, although they're pretty much finished now, aren't they? Let's be honest. Gigaton Punch on Twitter again asks, what fighting games do you love and why? Specific memories. Okay, so, um, well, going all the way back, I was never really the biggest fan of Street Fighter. I never really have been the biggest fan of Street Fighter. I played it on the Dreamcast a little bit. Uh, but the one that really, really, really grabbed me was the original Mortal Kombat. Um, and I was absolutely in awe. Going down to Hastings near where I live and I saw people playing on the uh, arcade machine and I'm, you know, obviously I was a Sega kid and I'm hearing, oh my god, Sega's going to have all the blood and the, you know, Nintendo have got this grey stuff coming out. I was so hyped for this game. Got it at Christmas. I had to beg my dad to give me the, uh, the, the, the gore code because he kept it away from me. Eventually I got it anyway. I was absolutely in love with that. and. Uh, I, I got very good with pretty much all the characters, which, you know, wasn't the greatest roster back then. So yeah, that original, I'd say the original trilogy of Mortal Kombat games are really good. I understand the new ones are really good, just I haven't got time to play them, if I'm honest, uh, you know, to really sink into something like that. Um, so yeah, other than that, uh, I was really into Yaya Kung Fu when I was a kid on the Amstrad, which is not obviously not the best version. Um, Karataka as well, but these aren't proper fighting games. Um, oh, actually, I was really, really into the original uh, Tekken trilogy, so the three Tekken games that came out on the PlayStation, uh, and Tekken Tag Tournament. Those four games I was really, really into. Oh, and of course, Soul Calibur on the Dreamcast. They had that sort of um, sort of story mode thing going on, you know, where you have to go around and you have to try and kill someone using this amount of punches and uh, do it using a particular move. I was very, very heavily sucked into that game. 
Um, and the only reason I put it down and pretty much never picked it up again was because uh, I lent it to a friend. He lent me Sonic Adventure and obviously I love that game as well. So uh, yeah, they are. There's quite a few thinking back. I didn't think I was that big of a fan, but turns out I am. Okay, so this one's from one of my patrons, but he did it on Twitter, Matt My Gamer XP. He asks a couple of questions. He asks, um, if you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Invincibility. You know. For naughty sake. Which video game generation do you wish you could relive? You know what? I would actually say I could relive my Mega Drive days, but I would like to do it from the other camp. Like I said, I've always been a big Mega Drive over SNES gamer, but uh, as of, I don't know, the last decade or so, I've really been hitting those SNES games, you know, Super Metroid, obviously the original Mario I already played, all those classic, classic SNES games, and I would like to really, uh, uh, you know, experience that 16-bit era, but from another perspective, so, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go for that era. Again, from Twitter, Dave uh, Void Nation asks, what do you think about the current state of the gaming industry? Western versus Japanese dev, Steam indie spam, etc. Now, like I said, I do keep an eye on the indie scene, um, but primarily, if I'm going to be honest, I really only keep an eye on the, the big hitters, which, you know, is a bad thing because a lot of people do that. And I do get asked quite a lot um, uh, to review a lot of these, you know, Steam uh, indie games, and, you know, it'll give me a code if I review it on my channel. It's not really what I go for, so I always pretty much turn it down. But with that said, isn't it? It's, it's gone full circle, hasn't it? Like the old Atari days where it was just one guy making a game and you know, nine times out of 10 it was a bit rubbish and completely forgotten. Unfortunately, that's what's going on with the um, Steam indie, uh, indie games. I don't know, like so, so many games are just out there. And honestly, I'm quite bad. I'm probably gonna have to see reviews on things before I go out and buy them. So it's become a bit of a junkyard, almost like a, an Android or an iOS device. It's just absolutely obliterated. With that said, uh, they are the people that are keeping it alive. Uh, there are some fantastic, fantastic uh, uh, indie developers out there and they're really pushing the scene for new ideas, which is crazy, you know, we still are getting new ideas uh, in the gaming world. So you got that. And to answer the other part of your question, Western versus Japanese development, I don't really know what to say. It does seems to me that obviously the Japanese development side are sort of uh, uh, not doing as much as what we were doing, and obviously back in you know the day it was the other way round. Um, I don't really care too much if I'm honest. Um, I haven't really got too much of an answer because I don't look into this sort of stuff as much. Uh, all these big AAA games that come out uh, are normally um, USA and obviously UK based uh, development companies. Obviously you got your uh, exclusions from that like Metal Gear Solid 5 or what have you but I don't play that many new games I, I play one game but where it takes me so long to edit my videos like that new Tomb Raider game it took me about two months to complete just because I'm playing for about half an hour back to editing play a little bit more half an hour back to editing so I really don't play as many games as you know you'd think someone with a YouTube gaming channel actually does um, so I don't sorry if that's not really any kind of answer really um, but yeah, uh, I hope that answered your question. Okay, so this one comes from a good friend, Gashead Steve, again on Twitter using the hashtag AskSlope, and he says, what made you get into YouTube? Who inspired you to start a channel? Favorite song to play at a gig? Daddy or Chips? So let's break this down a bit. Okay, so uh, what made you get into YouTube and uh, who inspired you to start a channel? So just like everyone, it's probably a little bit boring and generic to hear it now. When I started discovering YouTubers like um, uh, well, I'm mean, cinematic, like angry video game nerd and stuff like that. I was like, this is incredible. But there was one video that he did that completely changed me. And uh, he did the one uh, all about adventure um, on the Atari 2600 where you could win the chalice and the sword. And I was like, that's so, so interesting. Obviously, you've got the comedy side of angry video game nerd esque uh, stuff. But the interesting side behind it, I had no idea about that. But yet, it still really, really grabbed me. So I obviously went out and I looked for new YouTubers, I obviously hit all the big normal uh, channels out there. But when I started discovering people like Lazy Game Reviews, I already knew about Larry Bundy Jr. and obviously Ashins. Um, these guys were doing, they, they sort of let the, the game be the comedy itself. And uh, instead of like, you know, forcing jokes on you, which you know a lot of YouTubers do, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just not my personal style. 
and when, when they when they sort of let the, the game tell its own joke, you know, maybe because it's a little bit bad or some kind of glitch or what have you, and they actually really go into the history of the game, absolutely blew me away. The one for, and I'll link it in the description as well, from Lazy Game Reviews, when he did the um, video uh, all about the history of DRM, I was like, this is so, so good. Uh, a little bit longer than what I used to watch on videos back then as well, and it completely kept my interest. Like I say, with uh, Larry, there's too many to name actually, with his Yanks Can't Wank series, and, and going even further back with his uh, uh, Retro Corner and stuff like that he did with Wes, I was well into all of that. So, uh, that, that they really pushed me. And honestly, the, my first video, my Story of Roland episode, I sat on for about half a year to a year or so. And I was changing my voice, trying to be all funny and slapsticky, and I had things all flying over the camera and things badly cut out. And I redone it, and I redone it, and I redone it, and I redone it. And then Retro Gamer magazine did an article all about Alan Sugar and the Amstrad. And the same month, Lazy Game Review also did a review on the Amstrad. And I was like, right, that does it. I'm going to get this video out before someone, you know, else does it. So I got it out, and you know, I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. And as time goes on, I think it's like if you start a band, you really start to you know take the bits that you like from other channels or um, uh, bands, and yeah, you make it your own, and that's what I, what I think I have done with my channel. Um, yeah, so I hope that answers your question. That was a bit long-winded. <laughs> um, favorite song to play at a gig? I don't know, maybe. Well, it depends on what you want to do with gig. If I'm doing something like Download Festival, you can't beat the classics like Rage Against the Machine or something like that. That's always fantastic. Uh, if I'm doing a electronic gigs, maybe something like Underworld, Born Slippy is always a good one. Uh, but if I'm going to be doing something like uh, a wedding, then, you know, maybe some good old Michael Jackson or Queen, because, you know, can't beat that sort of stuff. Daddy or Chips? Chips. Okay, so I've got a couple here from his and her Let's Play. Um, who are your favourite YouTube gaming couple? And second question, why is it? It's his and her Let's Play. I'll take my check now, please. And secondly, if you could relive any time in gaming, when would it be and why? So to re-answer that question that I asked again for Mind Gamer XP, I'd love to redo that 16-bit era, but take it from another uh, perspective. But actually, you know what else? I've never, ever, ever been a fan of the N64. I have literally... Even to this day, is like going back and discovering those old games, I can't understand why you'd ever want to get an N64, except for Sin and Punishment. Uh, if you want to play Mario 64, you just get it on the 3DS instead. If you want to play uh, Ocarina of Time, get it on the 3DS instead, you know, Star Fox. So all of the big games have been re-released, so I don't understand why you'd want to go back and play original content that hasn't been re-released on an N64. I'm not a fan of GoldenEye, sorry. So. I don't know, like, maybe I'd like to actually have an N64 over my PlayStation 1 and, you know, really get sucked into it and, uh, you know, get that nostalgia that everyone gets when they play Ocarina, when they hear anything about Ocarina of Time or Goldeneye, because I just don't get it. Um, so, yeah, there you go. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a different answer, but, yeah, one of those two. I'd like to experience it from uh, somebody else's shoes. Again, from Twitter, name your hero, uh, or Hyrule's at Hyrule's Evil. Uh, brilliant, brilliant Twitter account, by the way. You're always posting stuff. It's really, really good. So, what is your best gaming memory to this point? Uh, okay, she's got a few questions. I'll answer that one first. Uh, what is your best gaming memory to this point? Probably the day uh, uh, I got my Mega Drive on Christmas. I believe it was 91, maybe 92. And, oh my God, putting in that Sonic the Hedgehog. And I played Sonic 1 first and just... This is incredible. Going from stuff like Roland on the ropes and uh, you know stuff like this, going over to Sonic the Hedgehog, boom! Absolutely, I, I, this was wicked, wicked stuff. And yeah, absolutely hooked me, hook, line, and sinker for the rest of my life. So I'd say that's probably my biggest gaming memory, biggest moment of my gaming life, definitely. Uh, what's the rarest game you own? Um, I don't know. I own. I own Knuckles Chaotix on the 32X, um, Castlevania Bloodlines on the Mega Drive, uh, I own both Shenmue 1 and 2 on the Dreamcast as well. I don't own anything like crazy rare, um, I don't know, oh I've got a uh, complete uh, boxed never opened copy of Knights with the, you know, that old sort of fat controller, that's quite nice. Um, but honestly, I don't go out there and just buy, I, I used to, I'm not going to lie, buy games just for the sake of it. I actually do buy games I want to play. So I don't go out there getting crazy rare games, uh, unless I'm 
really, really into them. So uh, probably they're my uh, rarest ones. Yeah, it's not that, not that mental, but yeah, those ones. And what games do you play the most? Uh, probably adventure slash indie type games. I'm a bit of a single player loner. I don't play a hell of a lot of games online. Um, so yeah, at the moment I'm playing through Unravel, which is obviously a 2.5D side scroller. Uh, I love games like that, absolutely adore them. So obviously things like Castlevania, um, Symphony of the Night, um, what else, what else, uh, Heart of Darkness, you know, you, you understand those sort of games, obviously the original Sonic Trilogy, the original Mario games on the NES and the SNES, uh, Super Metroid, those sort of games, I'd say they're definitely my favourite, um, uh, Super Meat Boy as well, that's obviously a bit more over and over and over and over again, so I really, really enjoy that, and I also really enjoy arcade racing games as well, so things like uh, your Ridge Racers, uh, obviously Crazy Taxi isn't, but you get the idea, um, uh, what else? Burnout. I absolutely adore the Burnout series. So yeah, th I'd say they're my two favourites. Yeah, but many, 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 many more as well. And finally, from Twitter, I have Chase Andrew Rogers. What games would you say defined your gaming life? Plus, what would you be? What would be your favourite Sega game? Uh, seeing as you're a huge Sega fan. So, uh, what games would you say defined your gaming life? Um, Again, it's going to be that original Sonic Trilogy plus Knuckles. Blew me away. Uh, quite a lot of games on those systems, actually. Global Gladiators, Earthworm Gym. Obviously, you can see I'm really doing a lot of these on my channel, so I really, really do hit those nostalgias. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to say they, they define me better than any, a, any other type of game. Um, yeah. Sonic Trilogy, uh, plus Knuckles, uh, from Jim, stuff like that, Booger Man, all this sort of stuff. Oh, actually, the Dizzy games. I've been a pretty much obsessed with those games since the Amstrad days. That was probably my first good mascot. So, yeah, those as well. I want to give those as well. Okay, so, yeah, over on my Patreon, um, uh, Tales Forever, a guy who I made an intro for, um, yeah, asked me a load of questions as well. So, uh, moving over to him, he's asked me a few, so I'll go through them. Um, uh, when your son grows up, are you going to be showing him modern games or retro games? You gotta do both. I want to show him what I grew up on, and I think he's gonna really, really enjoy that. You know, I've got my little man cave up in the attic that I'm sort of working on, so it'd be nice to you know go back and play those original, uh, you know, good 2D platformy type games. And I think you'd get a kick out of you know, like I say, the Sonic games, the Earthworm Jim games, Booger Man. You know, that's always fun for a kid. But at the same time, you know, I don't want him to be like an absolute recluse at school. So if Minecraft is something that he's into, I'm not going to, you know, hold back on that. That's, if I was a kid, I'd be well into Minecraft and stuff. So, yeah, a bit of that as well. And I, I want to get him into Disney Infinity when he's old enough, if that's still a thing. I'm sure there'll be someone else doing something similar. Um, yeah, Disney Infinity, maybe some Lego Dimensions, all this sort of stuff. I, I'm happy with both. There's, you, I, I cannot put, my, uh, put myself in either one of those courts, I'm afraid. Yeah. Have you ever been addicted to a game? Oh my god, like loads uh, of recent memory. I could not put down Batman Arkham uh, Knight at all. I was properly obsessed with that game. There's probably been a few Android Candy Crushy type games that you know you, you always give it a go. And uh, Farmville, I remember you used to go <laughs> and playing that, but actual good games. Uh, Symphony in the Night, I could not put that game down until I completed it. Um, Portal 2, I was absolutely obsessed with um, I, I, I literally did not want to stop playing that game whatsoever um, the, Jack, the original Jack and Dexter for the PlayStation 2 I got all of the uh, extra precursor orbs that you needed in that game I was very very much into that Super Meat Boy was another game that I was very very much obsessed with obviously the original Sonic games I've said it over and over but addiction is uh, addiction is a game that you just can't put down and I, once I've completed the game I really do move on so maybe Probably a game that I was really addicted to that I just did not want to stop playing. And it's a game that you know you can play over and over and over and over again. Would be games like Crazy Taxi. Um, I was even though I got the S class um, uh, driving license and got all the highest classes you can get in all of the uh, the extra mini games. I never wanted to stop playing that game. I was very, very, very heavily addicted to that. I had a few people used to play Choo Choo Rocket with, uh, also on the Dreamcast, and I never wanted to stop playing that game. Uh, Micro Machines on the Mega Drive. Oh, this list could go on forever. Micro Machines 2 Turbo Tournament was the one. Um, so, so many. So, so many. Uh, Galactic Plague on the Amstrad. <laughs> uh, 
uh, Oh Mummy, I was I got really really good with that without even realising what I was doing. Uh, SSX Tricky on the PlayStation Two. Uh, so so Destruction Derby 2 on the PlayStation 1 Wipeout 2097 on the PlayStation 1 I was that that game took over my life for quite some time yeah oh my god uh, Dance Dance Revolution second mix in the arcade every weekend for god knows how long me and a friend Shane used to go up to Hastings and just pump in about 50 quid into that arcade machine and always you know beat the latest high score so many games yeah uh, I, I, can't, I can't nail down just one. Maybe Supreme Commander on the plate on the, on the PC as well. Too many to name. Too many to name. Empire Earth as well on the PC. Yeah, loads. Absolutely loads. Theme Park. Uh, Sim Hospital. Uh, no, not, uh, Theme Hospital. Sorry. Oh, too too many. I can keep going on with this. Keep going on as soon as more and more pop in my head. But I've got to carry on. <laughs> What's your guilty pleasure game? Now this is a bit of a weird one because I don't think anyone has a guilty pleasure. I would say wholeheartedly if the Spice Girls released a song that I really liked, I would hand out and have the T-shirt. Would not care. So with the, it's the same with gaming. But I said it earlier. I, I got really into Simpsons, Tap Out, uh, Farmville, Candy Crush as well, and stuff like that. So. Maybe these, but obviously they are play obsessively for a week and then never pick up again. So, um, yeah, I was, I was really, really into those sort of games. Uh, that's probably my closest thing to a guilty pleasure. Do you think the Wii U will be as collectible as the GameCube in 10 years' time? I hope so, because I have a massive Wii U collection and I love that console. I, I think it will be. I mean... Even the Virtual Boy is the biggest flop that was. That's a highly collectible system now. So, I mean, it's never going to be that mental. But, uh, yeah, I, I think so. Um, uh, and like I said, I hope so. I, I, I adore collecting GameCube games and, and the same with my Wii U. And, and, and the Wii as well. The Wii's got some brilliant, brilliant games uh, amongst all the shovelware. So, uh, yeah, I think so. The Wii U definitely will be uh, a big collectible piece in 10 years' time. And I, l I like this one. Uh, how many subscribers would make SGR, Slopes Game Room, a full-time job? It already is a full-time job. I put in, I would say I probably put in about 40 odd hours a week on top of my 40 hour a week, nine to five job. So, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna need a serious, I need to get some serious subscriber base before I could ever move on. But I mean, I already put in a heavy, heavy amount of time. On my lunch times at work, I take a PC in and cut up a video just ready so when I take it home I can do all the, the nitty gritty stuff. I'm writing scripts all the time on my phone. On the, when I'm on the toilet, I'm writing a script all the time. I, it's a very much heavy takeover of my life. I'm hoping it's not gonna get, you know, I'm not gonna get burnt out from it because I'm still doing a video a week. Uh, I'm working with other people now to help on their channels as well. So I can't see that it is going to be, um, I get burnt out on it because I am absolutely in love and my subscriber base for someone of my size is going up quite quickly. Um, so it, it's all just, you know, pushing me to do more and more and more. So it already is a full time job. <laughs> Okay, so that's actually where I run out of room on my camera. I do think I answered everybody's question anyway, so I'm happy to leave it there. Guys, again, obviously, thank you so, so much for helping me uh, get this far. I'm at 2,500 subscribers. That's crazy. It obviously wasn't that long ago when I hit 1,000 subscribers, and here I am doing 2,500. Hopefully, it won't take too long until I do that 5,000 subscriber update video. Look, guys, um, Slopes Game Room is going from strength to strength. I'm doing videos, like I say, every single week, and I'm very happy to say that I've taken on YouTuber of the Month as well. So hopefully you're going to find some great other YouTubers uh, on my channel. So anyway, this is me signing out. I think I've waffled on long enough. This is DJ Slope signing out, and hopefully I'll see you all next time.